Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today in this tutorial we're going to talk about rigging our Siren Head character. And if I go into solid mode here and view our rig, you can actually see maybe what might be going on here today. You can see I've added in IK legs and the arms are all rigged. And my personal favorite part is the way these wires actually follow these speakers around. They're actually moving around with the speakers and deforming with them, which is super fun and pretty easy to do. So that is pretty much what you're going to be learning today, just how to place in this skeleton and rig it all. And it's actually fairly simple, not that bad of a tutorial today. So I'm super excited to show you that, and I hope you're ready for the ride. So let's just hop right into it here. I'm going to start by going Shift and C, just to put the 3D cursor at the center of the world and to center my view. And what I'm going to add in first is an armature. And if we go Z and go toggle X-ray, we can actually kind of see what we're doing here. And there's this little bone up here. That is great. Let's grab that and move it down to about here, I would say. And a good tip for rigging is to always be looking at the side view just to see where things are ending up. And if we grab this on the Y, that's pretty close to centered. And now we're just going to be taking this bone and extruding it into a skeletal system for this guy. So let's go tab and go into edit mode. And if we take this little end point here and extrude it, or let's first actually grab it and move that up on the Z axis, so GZ, and then go into side view. Let's just move this forward a little bit, so GY, and then back to front view, EZ. And there's just gonna be a lot of this extruding stuff going on. Once more, EZ, let's move that up to like right where the collarbones end up. And once again, checking the side view. Usually, this is a little bit more curved, so let's go something like that. All right, that's looking good. And just so you know, <laughs> to go from front view to side view, I'm just using one and two on the number pad. If you want, you can also hold down alt and middle mouse button and just kind of drag into different views. That's kind of a fun way to navigate around. It's actually really intuitive and really fast if you don't want to just swap over to your number pad. So once again, let's hit E and Z and just extrude up to this neck area. Hop into side view, GY. Let's make that kind of the base of the post here. And then with this, if we just center that, we can extrude it up to around this point here where this first megaphone is. So easy. Once more and a few more notches, so EZ. And I don't really know if this is necessary to do all these joints, but let's just have them there just in case. And for this, we can even go EX and extrude that off to the side there. And for this, if we go to top view, we can kinda go E and then just move it freely over to around here. And this will really help us in the future when we want to kind of pivot these around. There's some fun tricks to get the cords to follow those. But let's do first things first here and just keep working on the arms. So for the shoulder blades, we're just going to grab the center thing here. Move it out to somewhere around here. And then if you look in the top view, just kind of make sure that is centered on around where the shoulders are. A lot of the time it kind of requires even full on just pivoting around to take a good look and see where that is going to end up in 3D space. So if we just go back into front view and then extrude that down to the elbow and then once more to the wrist area. Check the side angle here. That's looking pretty good. And so once we do all that, if we go to front view once more, we can go E and Z and just get this nice hand bone going on here. Now for the fingers, things get a little bit more fiddly, but the basis of what we want to do is just kind of extrude this here and get that to where all your knuckles are. And this just kind of requires a lot of fiddling around with the view and extruding with E. And this really is the part that is just kind of the not really fun part of rigging, although weight painting could be a little bit more not fun. But if we do everything correctly, we shouldn't have to do much weight painting on this. 
So that's the first finger down. Let's just pop these three ones in as well. And just make sure with every joint, you're just checking the angles to make sure everything is lined up well. All right, that's the hand pretty much done. We really don't need these bones in here. The only reason we extruded them out that way was to keep the parenting. So if we go X and then bones, they'll disappear and these fingers will still be parented to the hand bone. And if we zoom out a little bit and just take a look at our progress, you can see we're really getting somewhere here. Now let's just hop back into edit mode and work on the lower body area. So if we take this main bone and just go E and extrude that downward, we can get kind of a hip bone. And then if we duplicate this from front view, so shift D, we can just kind of put the base of this around where the leg would start. Somewhere around there, I would say. Then we can just take this other joint and here's the knees. Those are kind of far down. That's so crazy with this um, really lanky character because when you stretch bones out really far, they just get really big. And these things just look so huge. They're almost bigger than the legs, which is kind of funny to me. But just make sure we're checking the side view still to match stuff up. We can just put one big bone there for the foot because I don't really plan on getting very close up on these gnarly feet that just don't look very good. And what will help us later when we're doing IK stuff is just to move this knee joint forward a little bit on the Y so that it's got ever so slight of a bend. But that is the first half done. And thankfully, the second half is going to be a lot easier since we did most of the heavy lifting just there. If we go L and then L, that will select all the arm and the leg, and it will accidentally select the spine here, but that's all right. If you just hit C and scroll up, that will make your selection circle bigger, and you can hit middle mouse button and just deselect those. On the same note, if you hit C, you can also select all these fingers by left mouse button, and then right mouse button will cancel the circle select tool. And now we have everything selected here. If we change the pivot type to be 3D cursor, so if you want to go up here, you can switch this to cursor, or I like to use period, that's a lot faster. And now when we rotate stuff, it will rotate around the 3D cursor. And also when we scale stuff, it will scale around the 3D cursor. So if we go shift D and duplicate, and then S for scale, and then X, and then negative one, that will scale it by negative one on the X axis, redundant, but Look at this nice duplication mirror we got. We don't have to worry about those fiddly hand bones, so that is very nice. Saves a lot of time for us. Now, one last thing you're probably going to want to do before you start parenting the mesh to the armature is if you go into front view, you're probably going to want to reorient the roll of the bones. Like you can see with these arms, these are not very centered. And if we rotated these on the local x-axis, our arms would be going all over the place, which we don't want when we're animating stuff. So let's go into front view, and if you hit spacebar, and let's look at roll, there's armature and recalculate roll, and that will really help us out. Shortcut is shift n, and once you do that, you get this panel here. You can do all sorts of axes if you wish. But what I'd like to do at the moment is go view axis, and that will just align everything to our view, which will work out pretty well, I'd say. I think the fingers might be a tiny bit messed up from this, but that's all right. We don't need to do a whole lot of work on those. So hopping back into object mode, if you select our mesh and then select our armature and go control P with automatic weights, this is going to really do a pretty good job on our mesh. And it might take a second if you have like a high poly sculpt like I'm kind of working with here. But after a second, you have this pretty much set up. If you go into pose mode and take a look here, you can see the arms seem to be working pretty well. And also, let's try this and just take a look. There is a little bit of funkiness going on here with the shoulders, and that probably helps a lot just to use the shoulder blades to do a lot of the heavy 
rotating there, so it's not too crazy. But another thing you can do, if you select the mesh in object mode, and look in the modifiers, there's actually a armature modifier that when you hit control P, it automatically added that in. And if you hit preserve volume, that will do a little bit better of a job with her shoulders here, which you can see here. Nice. And legs seem to be working pretty well here. We can continue to test stuff later, but before we do that, let's just recalculate all the rotations, Alt R, recalculate all the positions, Alt G, all right, our pose is neutral again. Now let's go back into edit mode on this skeleton and just add in a few more things. So a couple of things we're gonna want is some pull targets for the knees. And if we go into side view, we can select the knees and go E and Y. And let's select these bones for a second here. Go into the bone tab and under relations, if you hit X on this parent, that will mean it's no longer tethered to the knee here. And we can do that with this one as well. And then we can just grab these guys and move them on the y-axis. And let's go fairly far in front here, just because these knees will probably be all over the place. And these will work for our targets for our IK rig. Another thing we want to do while we're in edit mode is disable the parent of the feet at the moment. So we can just select those and X that out. And now if you go into pose mode, if you grab one of the feet, it looks pretty messed up. But that's all right, we're gonna fix that in a second here. Let's just name these bones really quick here. Knee target R, knee target L for right and left. All right, that's helpful. Now, if we hop into pose mode and we take this foot here and select this shin bone here and go Control, Shift, and C, we get this constraint menu here. And if you just hit inverse kinematics, that adds this in. And if you grab the foot here, you can see our leg is starting to work a little bit, but we need to tweak some settings here. So our issue is that our knees aren't going in the direction that we need them to. And I actually recorded this a couple of days ago, how to fix that. But if you take a quick look here and we grab this and move it up, the knee is obviously not pointing towards the pole target. That is messed up. He is bow-legged. He has not been riding horses all day. That would crush the horse. Okay, back on track. See, before, to get this result, we just entered the pull target information into the IK constraint, and this is the result we get. So I fell back to a hack, or a different technique if you want to call it that, that I've used before because I've run into this problem before. And if we move this leg up, you can see this upper leg and the knee, it's not perfectly dead on, but it follows the pull target a lot better, and you can just make him do all sorts of crazy dancing now. So let's go over real quick how to add that to this leg. We don't need any of this information. That is garbage. Get out of here. All right, and it's super easy. You just select the pull target and then select the thigh bone and go Control and Shift and C and then do Damped Track. And our knees line up now. Cool, back to the past. Another thing you might want to change is the chain length. If we switch that to 2, that will make it so that the chin and the upper leg are controlled by the foot bone. Alright, our legs are working out fairly well here. It looks a little bow-legged, but that's alright for now. Another thing we're going to have to do here is add a bone to the base of it. So if we just select the middle of the abdomen here, we can use this as kind of a parent and a bone to grab and move around the center of gravity for the whole creature. So if we select this hip bone and this top bone here, and then this middle one last, and go Control p and keep offset. Now if we go into pose mode and grab these, it shifts the weight of the body around, which is pretty cool. Except right now, our legs aren't parented, so that's pretty wonky. If we go back into edit mode, and select each of our legs and parent those to the hips. Control P, keep offset, and go back into pose mode. You can do that, which is fantastic. <laughs> and also, if you grab this now, you can just grab the whole thing, and it looks like a frog, which is also fantastic. 
Nice. Alrighty then, let's address the head part here. This is actually going to be fairly simple, which is nice in a project like this. If we go out of pose mode into object mode, select the pole here, and then select the armature, back into pose mode, and select this base here, we can go control P and bone. And this will parent the whole object to this bone here. Now if we rotate this, you can see the pole is moving around with that, which is good. Now let's just hit up these cones and make them work. So if we select these brackets, remember we parented everything to these just so everything would be nicely controlled. And we can select the armature, pose mode, select this bone here, control P and bone. Very nice. Let's just do that with this one here too. All right, now if we look in pose mode, you can rotate these megaphones around and it looks like it's broadcasting to different areas. And also you can rotate the base here which is fantastic. Very nice. Now, as you can see with what we just did, these wires are still kind of just loose and not really doing anything. So we're probably going to want them to look kind of like they're connected to these brackets here. And if we look at these in edit mode, you can see they're still curves, which is not what we want right now. We can fix that in a second. I'm just going to line this up a little bit better. So now what we're going to do with these is bring up the search function, which you can hit with space or F3, I think might be default. I have it set to space at the moment, but we can look up convert object convert to that's the setting we want. And then we want to convert it to mesh from curve. And if you take a look here and go into edit mode, you can see these both have vertices now, which is fantastic. What we're going to do real quick here is take both of these and select the armature and then parent them to this bone here, so Control-B. So let's go back into object mode, just select one of them, and what we're going to do with this is add a hook modifier, which is a super cool type of thing. If we go into the modifier panel, take this and go weight paint. Now in weight paint, there's a excellent tool called the gradient tool. I'm going to go into x-ray mode, so Z, and then down here. And then just start up here and paint a nice gradient down the wire here. And this is how this bone is going to affect this object. Now if we go back into object mode real quick here and look at our modifiers, we're going to go hook modifier and object. We're going to set that to be the bracket up here. And one last setting we want to add to the hook modifier is to add our vertex group that we just painted. So if we grab this bracket up here and move it around, you can see our wire follows it around, which is great. And since the bracket is parented to this bone, when we move this bone around, you can see the wire will follow it around too, which looks great as well. Now let's just repeat this process with the other wire. I know it's a little bit involved, but the results are totally worth it. So wire, weight paint, gradient. Let's paint this. Nice. Back into object mode and then hook modifier. Select the bracket up here and make sure the group is active. Let's try this. Very nice. And if we go into pose mode and rotate it around, that is indeed working. So that's great. And now when we move this, Alrighty, so we have our IK legs, we've got our fancy wires moving along, and if we look up here at the body area, these are all working pretty nicely, I'd say. We've got our volume preservation on the shoulders and everywhere else, so that's good. And this guy is almost ready for animating, which is going to be a whole lot of fun, I think. And even just posing him is pretty fun right now. So that is pretty much all of the tutorial. Let me know in the comments how you plan to apply this, and if you found this tutorial helpful and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, there is a link in the description that says Free Hydraulic Kit Bash Elements. And what happens when you click this is it will sign you up for my email list, and the first thing I'll send you are some hydraulic kit bash elements made for Blender users like yourself, and these are designed just to give you a little bit of a boost when you're working on mechanical projects. Now in the future, whenever I create new tutorials, I just mail out to everybody on that email list and let them know about the tutorials so that everybody's up to date. And that is pretty much it. I hope you have an excellent day, stay safe, and cheers!